Hello everyone and welcome. This is Localization Addict. I'm Hagane and today we're celebrating the fact that we got to 100 subscribers. I'm super happy about this and excited to continue uploading things to this channel. So in order to celebrate, I wanted to make a video covering 5 facts about localization and translation that you probably didn't know about. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 5. Localization started with modern computers. Let's start with a little history. Localization as a field started in the 1980s with the introduction of desktop computers. It was around this period of time that computer hardware and software started being used by normal users, that is, by non-experts in computer science and engineering. This change required a big shift in the way to think about a product's feature and functionality. Not only did desktop computer users now need software that would enable them to do their work more efficiently, but the software also had to reflect business processes in tune with local standards and habits, including local language. Word processors, for example, needed to support the input, processing and output of character sets in other languages, like for example, being able to type katakana, hiragana and kanji in Japanese. Language-specific features such as spelling and a user interface in the user's local language. The same expectations applied to hardware. For example, in 1985, the Spanish government agreed that all computer keyboards sold in Spain should have the ñ key. The need to internationalize these computers came along with the start of modern globalization, and other fields soon found that there was a similar need to transform their products in a way that would cater to each culture's specific needs. So, in a way, you could say that localization was born along with modern computers. Quite interesting, don't you think? Number 4. The difference between localization and translation. This is a question that I think most of us have asked ourselves during one point or another. We hear all this talk about game localization and translators, but how exactly are they different? Isn't localization also translation? Well, yes and no. Localization is defined as the process by which a given product is adapted to a certain culture that is different from the one the product was made in, whereas translation is the process of adapting a text from one language into another. So basically, translation is one of the processes included within the bigger process of localization. They are not exactly the same, but they are closely linked to one another. Now that you know the difference between these two, let's move on to a topic that will be of interest to those looking to get into this industry. Number 3. Translation rates are paid by character or word. Rates are a topic that anyone looking to work in this industry will be worried about. Who isn't worried about money these days? The thing with localization and more specifically translation is that instead of paying by the hour or by the month, it's paid by word or character, either by Japanese character or by English character. The average rate per word in the Japanese to English market, according to pros.com, one of the most important online websites for translators, is $0.12. So let's say you have a text that you need to translate, and this text is 10,000 words long. The standard for the industry would be that this 1000 word text would cost $1,200 to make. Of course, this doesn't mean that everyone earns this much, but it's something to take into account. Number 2. There is a translator's day and a saint of the translation industry. His name is Saint Jerome. He became the guardian of the translation profession after he translated most of the Bible into vulgar Latin in the 5th century. He wrote in the language that common people spoke in order to make it more accessible to everyone. His translation of the Bible is called the Vulgate. As you can imagine, this was not seen as a good thing back then. But eventually, this became the official Latin version of the Bible used by the Catholic Church. Our day is on the 30th of September, which they made it into a holiday. Number 1. Most translators never get credited on the works they participate in. 
there are many cases in which translators and others working in localization teams are made to sign a contract saying that they can't talk to anyone about the works they translated. This is called an NDA or a non-disclosure agreement and it's a big problem within the industry. Let's say you're hired as a part of the translation team to work for the next Final Fantasy game. Now, this would normally be a big opportunity to say that you work on a AAA game in your curriculum. But alas, you signed a contract saying that you can't. It is incredibly frustrating and it ruins opportunities for a lot of us to say that we worked on famous games or shows. Hopefully, more companies will realize their abusive contracts only harm translators once a given piece is officially released. These were my 5 facts about localization and translation, hope you enjoyed it! If you liked this video and would like me to make more videos like this, hit that like button and subscribe! I also have a Twitter account and TikTok, so go follow me there too! See you next time!